In this video, we're going to look at the functional groups I introduced in the last one and learn how to name molecules when they have these functional groups in them. So remember the basic rules for naming a molecule. You find and name the longest continuous carbon chain. You identify and name any groups or substituents that are attached to this chain. And you number the chain so as to give the lowest possible numbers in the name. But what about if we have a functional group in the molecule? How do we indicate that in the name? Well, this table shows the functional groups we met in the last lecture. Each of these groups has a different suffix that is added to the molecule's name to indicate that it's there. Alkanes, alkenes and alkynes you already know. For instance, you use the "-ene suffix to indicate that there is a double bond in the molecule, and you use the "-ine suffix to indicate that there's a triple bond. Haloalkanes don't actually have a suffix. They're always treated as a substituent, so they get added as a prefix to the front of the name, a bit like uh, hydrocarbon substituents like methyl and ethyl. We'll look at examples in a later video. The other groups each have their own suffix. If a molecule has an OH group in it, it's an alcohol, and so the end of the name will be ol. For instance, a three carbon chain by itself is propane, but with an OH group attached, it's called propanol. So let's have another look at our naming rules. Now that we have this extra information about functional groups and their suffixes, we need to update our rules. There are two amendments that we need to make. First, when you find and name the longest carbon chain, it must have the functional group in it. And this could mean that it isn't actually the longest possible carbon chain. The second amendment is that when you number the main chain, the functional group must be given the lowest possible number. So let's use this molecule as an example. First, we look for the longest chain that has the functional group in it. And that would be this one with five carbons. So the root of the name is going to be pent. And the functional group is an alcohol. You can see the OH group there. So the end of the name will be ol. So we call the main part of the molecule pentanol. Note that we still put the AN in the middle. This indicates that all the bonds are single. If the molecule had a double bond, we could amend this to pentenol. OK, but we're not finished yet. We need to indicate where the alcohol group is, and we also need to add the substituent. So we number the chain in such a way as to give the functional group the lowest possible number. In this case, it's easy, so the, we have to number the chain so that the OH group is attached to carbon number one. So that makes it pentan one ol Notice that we separate the numbers and letters by hyphens when writing a name. And the substituent is a two carbon chain, so it's called ethyl, and it's on carbon number two. So the complete name is 2-ethyl pentan one ol In the following videos, we'll go through more examples of how to name molecules containing each of the different kinds of functional groups.